Do you support another round of the stimulus package? And if so, how do you support it? Uh, do you support it with new taxes or more debt? The debt as of last year was $11.9 trillion. So are you for the stimulus? Are you for funding it through a tax increase or just digging a dig deeper debt hole or a combination? First of all, I'd make sure it was targeted to these key strategic industries that Massachusetts dominates in. High tech, biotech, life sciences, they create the jobs and they create jobs in manufacturing as well to manufacture those products. In terms of how I'd pay for that stimulus, unfortunately, under President Bush, the middle class got squeezed, the rich got richer. I certainly was a beneficiary, unfortunately, of those tax policies. But as Willie Sutton says, you know, you have to go where the money is. That's why he robbed banks. The money is with the wealthiest Americans. They've done very well under the Bush administration. We'd have to get that money in, in tax increases. We shouldn't go crazy because it will kill the economy. I think Stephen, Steve's given us a good idea. Maybe we should go to the banks and rob them for that <laughs> money. Um, the, uh, I, I think first you need to determine whether the first stimulus was effective or not. And as we look in Massachusetts, and I've been involved with making sure the money goes where it should uh, in a stop fraud task force, we want to see, did it save jobs? Is it producing jobs? And I think before we were, before I would be willing to support another stimulus, I would want to know uh, where it's going to be focused and is it going to provide for uh, what it's supposed to. All right. Alan, to the question of our national debt at 11.9 trillion, do you vote for another stimulus package, taxes or debt? Peter, we absolutely need another stimulus. People are hurting. You. We've had 21 months of straight job loss in this country. Unemployment in Massachusetts is at the highest in been, it's been in 26 years, and, and also nationally. But here's what I'd do. I wouldn't make it a bunch of big government spending. I would support small business. I'd have a new jobs tax credit. I'd do the other things I talked about in terms of accelerating depreciation, letting for write-offs. I'd also fully fund the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act, which could put 250,000 people doing good service jobs tomorrow they want to serve. What we need to do, and in terms of the national debt, that is a huge problem. But the way we do this is, and if you get people back to work, they will pay taxes. They will start spending again. It's consumer spending that will get us out of this recession. But people are afraid to spend because they're afraid they're going to lose their jobs. Once we're out of the recession, then we have to go back and tackle the debt. It's serious. This is where the horse trading comes in. I want to thank my colleagues for recognizing that they should come to me when they want to learn how Washington works. I'm happy to train them. I will tell you unequivocally, this is exactly what horse trading is all about. If you made me emperor, I would raise taxes on the wealthiest people in America to be able to pay, not for a stimulus, but for job creation. And a stimulus, that's one aspect of a stimulus. By the way, when you give tax cuts out, when you, do, when you change the tax code at all, when you raise money, that is part of the deficit. Deficit is also not just spending, it's also cutting taxes and not replacing them. So people have to understand exactly what we're talking about. I think that the last stimulus was okay. I voted for it. I'm glad I voted for it. I agree. I don't think it was big enough, and I don't think it was targeted enough to creating more jobs. It's also not gotten the credit it deserved for saving jobs. Right here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, $2 billion have gone back to cities and towns across this state to save teachers, firefighters, cops, DPW workers, and other essential workers. I also believe very firmly that part of this horse training can also be bad. It cost the Commonwealth of Massachusetts $500 million in horse trading in the Senate because three so-called moderate Republicans cut $25 billion out of the stimulus that came out of the House. Otherwise, the Commonwealth would not have to be going through what it's going through right now. So yes, horse trading is a part of life, and if horse trading means that you get jobs for your constituents, count me in. Healthcare. It seems that the Majority Leader, Majority Leader Reid, is coming up with a plan on the government option. All of you are in favor of the government option. Some are calling this plan government option light. Uh, would you hold out for government option or the giving opt-out, as it's being described, where each state could opt out if it chose to do it? Is that really having a government plan? Well, I can tell you unequivocally, without a robust public option, one that is required, one that is available to all Americans to make their own choice. Without that, it doesn't work because the whole concept is meant. So do you vote for the opt-out or not? It, again, probably not, but I have to see the entire package. Let me answer the question. The public right. option is not defined. So the first thing is we've got to define what the public option is. It has to be a robust option, as Mike says. If it's not a robust option, then I wouldn't vote for it. If it's robust, 
I would vote for it. I firmly believe that unless we have a strong public option, we're not going to see real reform, transparency, competition. Uh, but I do think that Senator Reid's approach um, would let us look at whether it would provide carrots and sticks, for instance, and if states could opt out only if they were able to provide uh, a, a public option on their own terms that might be agreeable under those circumstances. I think we're desperate to make progress on this. I think we won't see a real progress to a strong public option. I too would want to look at it, but I think at this stage we need movement and we need to make some reforms. Uh, and I'd like to see what his proposal actually is going to, I think it's stronger than the, um, the trigger proposal that we were looking at before. Peter, let's just be honest about this. The public option, the robust public option without an opt-out was killed in the Finance Committee by the lobbyists and the special interests and the PACs. I will vote for universal health care. We have to get it done. We got to seize this moment. But there are six health care lobbyists for every member of Congress. The health insurance companies are spending $384 million to get the health care they want, not the health care the American people are demanding. The country and this state support the public option. But you know, here's where we are. I'm the son of a doctor and, a, and my mother's a nurse. I grew up in a household where I was taught universal health care should be a right in the greatest country in the world, not a privilege. Important to have a Republican vote, as our neighbor Olympia Snow voted for the plan. Is it 60 votes of Democrats enough? Uh, do we need to have a bipartisan plan in order for the country to accept it? Or if the Democrats can get 60 votes, go for it. I want to be clear. Not only do we not need 60 votes in the Senate, we need 51 if we have enough people with enough courage to do reconciliation in the Senate. Now, I know that my colleagues haven't served time in Congress, and I, maybe they don't understand the rules, but in the Senate, when you have the votes, you go for it. They didn't wait for it on the WPA. They didn't wait for it on Social Security. They didn't wait for it on Medicare. We should not wait for this to make sure that everybody's happy because we'll never make everybody happy. We need to get health care for everybody and keep it as affordable as we can, as soon as we can. The minute we have the votes, we should go. 14 Americans were killed in Afghanistan today. Would you vote to send additional troops to Afghanistan? And how would you define success in Afghanistan? I'm not ready to support a troop increase in Afghanistan. The administration needs to more clearly lay out the goals and objectives. What's the cost going to be in American lives, brave American lives, and treasure? We've already wasted a trillion dollars in Iraq. How long are we going to be there? What's the exit strategy? And most of all, can we get the American people behind it? Because we're a democracy, and our history shows that if we don't support our involvement in foreign conflicts, they're not sustainable. I think we need to focus more on Pakistan. We need a comprehensive foreign policy strategy, not just a military strategy. We're spending $65 billion in Afghanistan, only about $2 billion in Pakistan. That's where Al-Qaeda is, and Pakistan has nuclear weapons. That's where the real danger is. I will not vote to send more troops to Afghanistan absent a significant change in the situation, which I don't expect that to change at all. I've been to Afghanistan a couple of times now, and when I go, I talk to the men on the front lines. I go as close as I can get to the front lines, as close as they'll let a member of Congress go. And I will tell you unequivocally that nobody there thinks that we can win this in a military fashion. It's not a military issue anymore. We've already accomplished our mission. Our mission was to destroy, kill, and harass al-Qaeda. They're not in Afghanistan anymore. And by the way, they're not just in Pakistan. They're in Yemen. They're in Somalia. They're in Ethiopia. They're in Sudan. They're all around the world, and we need to chase them all around the world because they will attack us again. What we need to do in Afghanistan is come up with a plan to leave, just like we should have done more quickly in Iraq. This is not a place that a military solution is doable. The Steve. English couldn't do it. The Russians couldn't do it. Nobody could. Alexander the Great couldn't do it. We can't do it. More importantly, we shouldn't do it. We accomplished our mission. We need to leave.